Hi everyone, how are you today? Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, welcome to my channel where you can learn the real world coding experience. And this is Huang, the coding expert. If you want to pass the CBC exam, COC exam, CCSP, or any outpatient coding exam to start your coding career, then you are in the right place. What you have learned from my videos is very unique and I believe it is also invaluable simply because I utilize my 25 years coding experience and also my own successful learning techniques that I have developed during my time in college and university. For the record, please visit my website codingwithhuang.com and read my student comments about my training. Then you would have an idea how effective it is. I would not waste my time and yours if I don't believe what I am doing. And all I ask in return for my time and expertise is your liking, sharing, and subscribing to my channel. The future of this video will depend on your support. Today's topic is how to pass the CBC exam guarantee in 2020, part 6, the cardiovascular system, how to call the cardiac devices. All right, without further ado, let's get started. I just want to take a few minutes to go over the CBC exam question in order to check our progress up to this point. So far, I have covered the integumentary system, the musculoskeletal system, the digestive system, the urinary system, the nervous system, the medical terminology and anatomy. On the medical terminology and anatomy, do you notice that on each lesson, I always go over the basic anatomy and physiology. And if you watch all my videos from the beginning, not just for the CBC exam prep service, then you will learn much more. ac 10 cm I cover that. Coding guidelines. I also cover that when you watch my video about how to call burns, neoplasm, equal effect versus botulinum, anemia, diabetes, etc. Those are RC 10 CM coding guidelines. Today, I will cover the cardiovascular system, 30,000 serocipity. Once in a while, I recommend that you should check back this slide to see the progress that you make and play catch up if you miss any lesson. As usual, what you need for my lesson are an RC10CM book, a CBT main notebook, notepads, highlighters, pens and pencil, drinking water, coffee or green tea, a quiet place that you can study. You can also use some calming music in the background to help you relax and focus. I booked the link of a new relaxing music channel that I really enjoy below this video, just in case you want to try. And last but not least is your positive mental attitude, which is the most important element in addition to the tips and strategy that would help you pass the exam successfully. Before we tackle the case study, I would like to briefly go over the basic anatomy of the heart, just enough to cover the CBC exam. Your heart does a lot of work to keep the body going. Each day, the average human heart beats about 100,000 times, pumping 2,000 gallons of blood through your body. The heart is made up of four chambers, two upper chambers known as the left atrium, the right atrium, and two lower chambers called the left ventricle and the right ventricles. It is also made up of four valves, the tricuspid valve, located between the right atrium and the right ventricle, the pulmonary valve, located between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery, the mitral valve, located between the left atrium and the left ventricle, the aortic valve, 
located between the left ventricle and the aorta. Blood passes through a valve before leaving each chamber of the heart, so this valve prevents the backward flow of blood. Now, let's talk about the heart conducting system. In the simplest term, the heart is a pump made up of muscle tissue. Like all muscle, the heart needs a short energy and oxygen to function. The heart function. The heart pumping action is regulated by an electrical conducting system that coordinates the contraction of the various chambers of the heart. The cardiac conduction system consists of the following component. The sinus atrial node or SA node located in the right atrium near the entrance of the superior vena cava. This is the pacemaker of the heart. It initiates all heartbeat and determines heart rate. Electrical impulse from the SA node spread to our both atrium chambers and stimulate them to contract. The atrial ventricular node or AV node located on the other side of the right atrium. The AV nodes serve as electrical gateway to the ventricles. It delays the passage of the electrical impulse to the ventricle. This delay is to ensure that the atrium chambers have ejected all the blood into the ventricle chambers before the ventricle contract. The AV node receives signal from the SA node and pass them onto the atrial ventricular bundle or bundle of his. This bundle is then divided into the right and left bundle branches. We conduct the impulse toward the apex of the heart. The signals are then passing onto the person key fiber, turning upward and spreading throughout the ventricular myocardium. The electrical activities of the heart can be recorded in the form of electrocardiogram called ECG or EKG. Let's talk about the pacemaker device. A pacemaker is a small device that is placed in the chest or abdomen to help control abnormal heart rhythm. This device uses electrical pulse to prompt the heart to beat at a normal rate. Pacemakers are used to treat arrhythmia. Arrhythmias are problems with the rate or rhythm of the heartbeat. For example, symptomatic heart block, first degree, second degree, and third degree. Symptomatic sign of bradycardia. Brady means slow. So bradycardia means slow heart rate. The opposite of the bradycardia is tachycardia. Tachy means fast. So tachycardia means fast heart rate. You need to know this term for the medical terminology. Atrial fibrillation with asymptomatic bradycardia. The doctor will decide what type of pacemaker the patient needs based on their heart conditions. All pacemaker system have two basic components. First, the pulse generator, the power source or battery, and second, the lead system, which connects the pulse generator to the endocardium. The doctor may use the term the generator or battery interchangeably, but they are the same, which is the power source of the pacemaker. Now, there are three types of pacemaker. A single chamber pacemaker only has one lead, either right atrial or right ventricle lead. A dual chamber pacemaker has two leads, right atrial and right ventricle lead. And on CRTP or biventricular pacemaker has three leads, right atrial, right ventricle, and left ventricle lead. Single means one chamber, dual means two chambers, and biventricular means three chambers. I hope you get it. Defibrillator components. Now, both devices, pacemaker and defibrillator, are implantable devices that help treat irregular heart rhythm and improve quality of life for patients. 
But what is the difference between the two devices? A pacemaker keeps your heart beating steadily, and a defibrillator also does the same thing, that is monitor your heart rhythm. However, there is one key difference. A defibrillator can also shock your heart if it detects a dense rhythm. When your heart begins to pump too fast, it can start contracting before the ventricle are full of blood, which can lead to cardiac arrest. If that happens, the defibrillator will send an electrical current or shock to the heart and restore the heart beating. So, who needs an implantable cardioverter defibrillator? A cardiac arrest called by VFib of fainting with spontaneous ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation and structural heart disease. A heart attack survival with ejection fraction of 35% or less. Patient with dilated cardiomyopathy or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or one or more risk factor for cardiac arrest. Or a long QT syndrome and risk factor for cardiac arrest. Similar to pacemaker, all defibrillator systems have two basic components. First, the pulse generators, the power source or battery. And second, the lead system which connects the pulse generator to the endocardium. The doctor may use the term the generator or battery interchangeably, but they are the same would eat the power source of the defibrillator. Now, there are three types of defibrillators. A single chamber defibrillator only had one lead, either the right atrium or right ventricle lead. A dual chamber defibrillator had two leads, right atrium and right ventricle leads. And a CRTD or biventricular defibrillator had three leads, the right atrium, the right ventricle, and left ventricular lead. Again, single means one chamber, dual means two chambers, and biventricular means three chambers. Please remember this. I believe this is enough for the anatomy of the cardiac devices, pacemaker and defibrillator. Let's talk about how to call them. But before I start, I have an advice for you. It's very confusing to use a CPT book to look up codes for the procedure, especially if you are new to coding. So I want you to find a blank page in your CPT book that you can write, usually at the end of each section. Then you jot down this code that I am going to show you, and then turn to this page when you call these cardiac devices. The first scenario is for an initial insertion of permanent pacemaker system. Initial insertion means that the patient never had a pacemaker device implanted before. It's very important that you have to notice. I say it again. Initial insertion means that the patient never had a pacemaker device implanted before. Therefore, the first component must be implanted is the generator, in other words, the battery, and then depending on where the lead implanted, you can use 3206 for an insertion of a generator and an atrial lead, 33207 for an initial insertion of a generator and a ventricle lead, 3208 for an initial insertion of a generator in both atrial and ventricle leads. If an LV left ventricle lead is inserted at the same time, then use the S on call 33225, the S on call for an insertion of the left ventricle lead in addition to the main curve. Pacemaker replacement. Now, just like all other battery-operated devices, the battery will drain, deplete, and needs to be replaced. Depending on how active the pacemaker is, 
The pacemaker battery on average lasts somewhere between 6 to 7 years. That said, no patient who received the initial implantation of the pacemaker that I mentioned on the previous slide will come back for the battery chain. Basically, what they do is to remove the old battery or generator and then replace it with a new one. Again, this code only applies to those patients with pre existing system who only need a generator chain or end of life battery exchange. Lists are not impacted in this scenario as they are not removed and are not replaced. If that is the case, then your disk code depends on the type of generator. If a single lead generator replaced, then use 33227 for a single lead generator, 3322A for a dual lead generator, and 33229 for a biventricular lead generator. The second scenario is they replace the battery and also implant a new lead, but they do not remove the old lead. Instead, they cap the lead and leave it there. If that is the case, then the first code you need is 33233, removal of all pacemaker generator. And the second code will depend on the new lead. You use 33206 for a new generator with a true lead, or 33207 for a new generator with a ventricle lead, or 33208 for a new generator with both atrial and ventricle leads. Unless the lead is infected in some cases, then they have to remove the lead. If that happens, then you use these two codes, whatever applies. 33224, removal of transvenous pacemaker electrode, one lead, either atrial or ventricular lead. And 33225, removal of transvenous pacemaker electrode, two leads, both atrial and ventricular leads. Pacemaker upright. Upgrade from single to dual chamber pacemaker system. U33214 for an upgrade from a single chamber, one lead device, to a dual chamber pacemaker. In this procedure, they will replace the generator or battery and then insert a new lead so that it will become a dual chamber pacemaker. Second scenario is when they operate either a single or dual chamber pacemaker to a new biventricular pacemaker system or CRTP. Then you need to use two codes. The first code is 33229 for a replacement of old battery with the new biventricular generator so that this new generator can accumulate for the third LV lead. And of course, you also need to use 33225 for an insertion of a new LV lead, left ventricular lead. For those of you who are sitting for the CBC or any outpatient coding exam, that's it, all you need to know. Defibrillators, AICD procedures. AICD stands for Automatic Implantable Cardioverter Defibrillators. It is very similar to pacemaker procedure. So let's talk about how to call for an initial insertion of the fibrillator system. Initial insertion means that the patient never ever had a defibrillator device implanted before. It's very important that you have to remember this. I say it again. Initial insertion means that the patient never ever had a defibrillator or an AICD device implanted before. Therefore, they need both the generator and the lead or list implanted. The good news is that there is only one code, 33249, is used for both single and dual chamber defibrillator. The second scenario is the generator or battery replacement. No lead involved. Just like all other battery operated devices, the battery will drain, deplete, and needs to be replaced. 
Most AI CD device battery will last at least five to seven years, depending on use. That said, those patients who receive the initial implantation or the fibrillator from this scenario will come back for the battery change. Basically, what they do is to remove the old battery or generator and then replace it with a new one. Again, this code only applies to patients with pre-existing system who only need a generator chain. In other words, end-of-life battery chain. Lists are not impact in this scenario as they are not removed and are not replaced. If that is the case, then you discount depending on the type of generator. If a single lead generator replaces U33262 replace AICD battery or single chamber, or 33263 replace AICD battery generator dual chamber, or 33264 replace AICD battery generator by ventricular. The last scenario is to operate on AICD2 by ventricular device or CITD. If that is the case, then you need to use two codes 33264 replace AICD battery generator by ventricular and of course 33225 for the insertion of a new LV lead. Similar to pacemaker device, if for any reason the lead needs to be removed due to the infection or other complication, then you need to add this code 33244 remove AICD lead single or dual by transfinite extraction. Alright, that is more than enough that you need to know for a CBC exam, COC exam, and CCSP exam. I'm ready to tackle the first case. Are you? Let's do it. Case number one. When you call the cardiac device cases, I want you to find out what scenario they come in for. And then use my code sets that I asked you to write out in your CBT book to tackle it. First scenario is on initial implantation. Second scenario is they come back for a generator or battery chain. And the third scenario is to operate a device to a biventricular device, CITP or CITD, which requires the third LV lead insertion. Okay, I say it again. When you call the cardiac device cases, I want you to find out what scenario they come in for, and then use my code set that I ask you to write out in your CBD book to tackle it. The first scenario is on the initial implantation. The second scenario is when they come back for a generator or battery chain. And the third scenario is when they operate the device to a biventricular device, CITP or CITD, which requires the third insertion of the left ventricular lead or the LV lead. All right, let's find out. Indication. This is an 80-year-old female with critical aortic stenosis and recurrent congestive heart failure symptoms, mostly refractory to arrhythmias. Therefore, this is indicated so that we can give better control of heart rate and to maintain better blocker therapy in the order of treatment. This is overall a class 2 indication for permanent pacemaker insertion. This will tell you that this is on the initial implantation of the pacemaker. This patient never had a pacemaker implanted before. Now, your next focus would be on what type of pacemaker, single or dual chamber. Let's continue reading. Procedure, IV sedation and and now yes it were given using a number 10 scalpel blade of 5 cm horizontal incision was made in the left pectoral deltoid region where the skin was dissected and blunted down into the pectoral major muscle fascia 
the skin was then undermined, used to make a pocket for the pacemaker. This is how they create a pocket for the generator, in other words, the battery. The guy wire was then turned to the pacer pocket. Call the set was then inserted to the guy wire. The ventricular lead was placed in its appropriate position and good threshold was obtained. The lead was then connected on post generator. The skin was then closed with sutures using a subcuticular uninterrupted technique the patient tolerated the procedure well. Now you know there is only one lead E inserted which is the ventricular lead. You already have a set of codes for the initial implantation of pacemaker. I will give you 10 seconds to tell me what would be the right code for this procedure. Your time starts now. Alright, if you assign 33207, initial insertion of single chamber pacemaker ventricle lead, congratulations, you are on the right track. If you didn't write out the code set from the previous slide, please pause the video, open your CBT book, find the blank page, and do it now before we move on to the next case. I'll wait for you. Assuming you already did that. Case number two. The same approach, let read and find out what scenario they come in for. A patient was admitted for replacement of single chamber pacemaker device because the battery was expected to fail within a short time. Device was replaced with single chamber, ready response pacemaker device. No list need to be replaced. What is the correct call for this procedure? So this is the second scenario. When they come back for a battery or generator replacement, please use my call set and tell me what would be the right call for this procedure. I'll give you 10 seconds. Your time starts now. If you pick 33227, remove and replace pacemaker post generator single chamber device. Congratulations again. You are getting better every day. I hope that you learned something new today. Alright, just a friendly reminder that if you forget to click the like, share or subscribe buttons, now is the time to do so before I tackle the last case. Let's print it on. Case number three, the same approach. Let's read and find out what scenario they come in for. Indication, ischemic cardiomyopathy, procedure, ICD implant. The left delta battery region was anesthetized with a solution of 1% xylocaine. A venotomy was performed and the client wire was advanced via this venotomy into the inferior vena cava. Over the client wire, a knife frame pure white shed was placed, and via this shed, a metronic defibrillator lead was advanced to the right ventricular apex and screwed into place. The lead was then sutured to the underlying bettorolis muscle using seal suture. A subcutaneous pocket was then created using plumb dissection. The lid was what as well and connected to a new metronic maximal single chamber ICD. And the entire system was then implanted into pocket. Propofol was administered by qualified members of the anesthesia staff. 
Once adequate sedation was obtained, I critical time T-way shock was used to induce ventricular fibrillation. This was appropriately recognized and treated with an inter 20 u shock from the defibrillator, resulting in inside the rhythm. The patient tolerated the procedure well. Based on what I just highlighted, you know right away this is the first scenario when the patient comes in for an initial implantation of the defibrillator. There is only one lead in this case. So this is a single chamber defibrillator. Please use my call set and tell me what would be the right call for this procedure. I will give you 10 seconds and your time start now. If you assign 3249, initial implant of the fibrillator single chamber, congratulations again, you are the expert now. The good news is that both single and dual chamber defibrillator are sharing the same code, 33249. Another code that I want you to know is 93641, testing the defibrillator at time of initial implantation. And here's how it is performed. Once adequate sedation was obtained, a critical time T-way shock was used to induce ventricular fibrillation. This was appropriately recognized and treated with an inter-20 U-shock from the defibrillator, resulting in sign rhythm. Basically, they want to make sure that the device is working properly by recognizing the V-fib and shock it back to a normal rhythm as it intended to do in case of a cardiac arrest. I hope that you are getting better and better and sharper each time you watch and learn from my videos. And all I'm asking is your liking and sharing my video to show your support to my channel. This is all for today. I hope that I have more time for case study. I will post the homework inside my free training class. Thank you so much for watching, liking and sharing. If you find this video helpful, informative and easy to learn with this format, or if you have any suggestion then please leave me a comment below just to let me know. I really appreciate it. Until next time, have a great day.